Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. I hope that December was amazing for you guys. I hope you had a great Christmas if you celebrate Christmas. Otherwise, I just hope you had a wonderful holiday season. Today's video is going to be my December favorites. I am going to film a video on my 2017 beauty favorites, which might already be up on my channel. If it is, I'll link it in the description box below. But I still wanted to share the products that I've been loving throughout the month of December with you guys. So make sure you let me know in the comments below, especially because because I've really been enjoying hearing about people's winter essentials, the products they reach for when it gets a little bit colder or you know the season changes. I did film a video on my winter essentials. If you want to check it out, I'll link it in the description box below. But otherwise, let's jump into it because I have a bunch of products to share with you guys, a couple of favorites, a couple of fails. So let's get to it. So the first product that I want to talk about is the Tarte Blush Bazaar Amazonian Clay Blush Palette. I grabbed this during the Sephora VIB sale and I'm so glad that I did. I went back and forth about whether or not to grab it for a little while because I didn't know if the quality was going to be the same as the single pan blushes and I really enjoy the Tarte Amazonian Clay blushes. They're like my favorite high-end blush formula and I'm so glad that I did grab it because I find the formula to be the exact same which is really nice because you get a really good Good amount of product in this palette for a pretty affordable price. I mean, I think it's around the $40 range, but that's like the cost of two single blushes. And in here you get eight different blushes and two highlighters. Obviously the pan size of these blushes is a little bit smaller, but I still believe that the value of this product is really high. You get a good mix of colors and they're a little bit more dramatic than I typically wear, but I think that you can sheer them out if you really blend them onto the cheeks really well, or you can build the color up for more of a saturated appearance which is nice as well and the highlighters are beautiful just it's a very high quality palette in general and I totally think that it's worth the price tag the other blush that I've been loving is from hourglass and I talked about this in my winter essentials so again I won't spend too much time on it but I've been wearing it so often during the month of December I either wear this blush or the Tarte palette and I can't get enough of this color it's going to be my absolute favorite all winter long it's in the color ethereal glow and it's just the most perfect cooler toned pink color. It makes you literally look like you're like blushing from like going outside in the cold weather. It's very, very subtle, but very beautiful at the same time. It just, it's the perfect formula. I don't think that this color would work for everybody because it is a lighter color. It's a lot more subtle, but they have a bunch of colors to choose from on the website. So I would say if you're looking to treat yourself or you know, you've been thinking about trying an hourglass blush, I would totally recommend them. I think they're just gorgeous on the face and I'm kind of, you know, mad at the same time that I like them now because I will buy another one eventually and they're expensive. I mean, they're they're not cheap at all, but they're totally beautiful on the face. They just like transform your face. And whenever I wear this blush, I get so many compliments. So I totally recommend checking it out. I do have a mascara combination that I thought I would share with you guys. I've actually been using these two together during the months of November and December. I didn't share it in last month's video because I think I talked about a different mascara favorite, but these two are my essentials. I thought I lost them the other day because I put them in my purse to do my makeup on the go somewhere and I couldn't find them and I was freaking out because it's my favorite mascara combo and I didn't know what to use to replace them. So. I feel like that's when you know you really love a product, or products in this case, I guess. So the first mascara that I use is the Essence Lash Princess Volume Mascara. A ton of you guys told me to try this after you've heard me rave about the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara, which is the one that comes in like the black and green tube. So I tried this one and I love it. This one is great at curling my lashes and providing a lot of volume. I do not curl my lashes with like an eyelash curler. They just, they scare me. I'm so nervous that I'm going to use it and then like I can't even think about it like rip all my eyelashes out they just they scare me or pinch my eyelid so I can't use those but I feel like my eyelashes need something to help them kind of curl and stay lifted so I love using this one as a base mascara or as an everyday mascara because it does a great job but it doesn't provide too much drama or too much volume where you know if you want like an everyday look sometimes you don't want like super crazy dramatic lashes which usually doesn't happen for me I love like dramatic lashes all the time but if you like a good everyday look this mascara 
mascara is a great option. So what I'll usually do is use this first and then I'll go in with the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara afterwards just to add a ton of volume and drama to the lashes. This is my favorite mascara of all time. It's so, so good. And I know that high-end mascaras are expensive. And honestly, there are very few high-end mascaras that I would purchase over like more affordable drugstore options. But this is one of them. It's probably actually the only one that I have to have in my collection because it just adds so much drama to the eyelashes. And I don't wear false lashes, so I still like like that dramatic eye look and I don't know how to get it other than using this mascara. It's so, so good. So as for a mascara fail, I have another mascara from e.l.f. Cosmetics. I feel like I've been slowly working through all of their mascaras, and honestly, I just haven't found one that I think is worth the money. I just don't like any of their mascaras. Actually, there is another one that I tried, which I'm going to talk about in an e.l.f. video coming up that's that's actually pretty good. It just, it's not my personal favorite, but I still feel like it's a good formula, if that makes sense. I'll talk about it in a video soon. But I did try out the Volumizing and Defining Mascara this month, and at first I was like, okay, like this isn't terrible. I think it's going to work for me. And like it ended there. It just didn't build up my lashes at all. Like the first coat looked really pretty. It separated them. It totally defined them like the name says, but there was no volumizing part. It didn't make my lashes look thick or voluminous or dramatic or long or anything. It just separated them. So I just felt like it didn't do anything for my lashes. I want to like e.l.f. mascaras because I love e.l.f. cosmetics, but they totally fail in the mascara department. I just don't find their mascaras to be, you know, worth anything. I wouldn't even spend like a dollar on them. I did spend a dollar on them. I spent a good amount of money on them because I bought all of them, but I feel like they're all just terrible. Do you guys like e.l.f. mascaras? Have you tried one that works for you? Let me know in the comments below because honestly, I just, I've been disappointed by all of them. So again, this one is a fail. So I've been using the Drunk Elephant Virgin Marula Luxury Facial Oil for probably over a month at this point. I don't remember exactly when I incorporated it into my skincare routine, but it was during the month of November at some point and I love this product. A bunch of you guys told me to try using a facial oil because I have oily skin and a lot of you said that I need a facial oil. Sometimes when you have oily skin, it's because your skin is dehydrated. And I don't know if that's always the case because sometimes I feel like my skin is very hydrated, very moisturized, and my skin is very oily. It's just my skin type. But I do feel like a facial oil has really made a big difference in my skin. This facial oil is like a serious oil. It's going to feel very greasy see on your skin. So I just use a very small amount before I go to bed at night and I apply it just on a couple of areas. I apply it around my nose because I feel like I can struggle with dryness around my nose, usually on my chin area, my forehead, and maybe like this part of my face. And when I wake up in the morning, my skin looks a little bit oily, but after I wash my face, it looks so beautiful and healthy looking. I think if you have dry skin, you are going to love this product so much because it's going to moisturize your skin like nothing you've ever tried before. Well, I don't know if I can say that because I haven't tried a ton of products meant for dry skin, but I just feel like it's so, so hydrating. But if you have oily skin, I still think you could benefit from it just because it really transforms my skin and makes it look so beautiful and healthy. I would just recommend using a little bit less because it can get, you know, really heavy on the skin. If you have sensitive skin or your pores are really easily clogged, I don't know if this is going to be ideal for you because it is a very heavy oil. You might be better off with like a serum, like a lightweight serum instead of this facial oil, but my skin's usually pretty sensitive and I haven't really struggled with like clogged pores or it hasn't been irritated by this product. It just really soothes the skin, soothes the skin and goes on beautifully and makes your skin just look plump and healthy and beautiful. So I totally love this. I know Drunk Elephant products are expensive, but I'm a believer in this product for sure. Another hydrating face product that I've been loving during the month of December is the Becca Cosmetics First Light Priming Filter Instant Complexion Refresh. I tried this last year around this time for the first time and I liked it, but I didn't know if it was an essential for me. So I broke it back out again this month because I've been loving so many hydrating products and it's amazing. I talked about it in my winter essentials video, so again, I won't spend too much time on it, but if you don't like the primerizer because it's too hydrating or it sounds like it's going to be too moist moisturizing for your skin, try this product. I like this and I think it's going to be more ideal for you if you have 
oily or combo skin rather than the primerizer. I mean, I love the primerizer. I think it's such a good product, but it is very, very hydrating. So if you don't want all that moisture on your skin before you apply your foundation, this might be a really good alternative. It just goes on the skin really nicely and it gives you that extra dose of hydration, but it sinks into the skin. It makes your skin feel really smooth and glowy and hydrated. So when you apply your foundation, it goes on really nicely, but it's not quite as slippery or moisturizing as the Smashbox Primerizer. So I think if you have oily skin, you'll probably end up liking this product better. I don't know if I like it better than the Primerizer because I really like the Primerizer, but I could see myself you know, using it more than the primerizer. I feel like the primerizer is good on days when my skin needs like that extra hydration or just is red or irritated and it's sensitive. I'll always use that product, but I feel like for an everyday basis, this one might actually replace it for me because I do have oily skin and I feel like, you know, it's not too hydrating, but it still gives you a good amount of moisture. So this is kind of a product that I changed my mind about. I mean, I don't think I've ever said that it's been like my absolute favorite. I liked it. And again, even in this video, it has eyeshadow all over it. Even in this video, I don't think, you know, it's a terrible product. Like it's not a complete fail, but I just feel like there are so many other products that are better than it. So I am decluttering it from my collection this month, but it is the Catrice Prime and Fine Brightening Eyeshadow Base. I like this product, but I feel like it's too hydrating and like, too slippery for me for an eyeshadow base. If you have dry eyelids, it might really be a great option for you, but if you have oily eyelids, I would probably skip this one. I kind of felt like I applied it and then I was like trying to rub it in for like 10 minutes and it just didn't want to rub in, which is so random for an eyeshadow primer. It just, it wasn't sticky or tacky and I don't always prefer like a sticky eyeshadow base, but I do like it to like rub into my eyelid and I just felt like I was kind of like rubbing this one all around. It almost has like a little bit of a greasy residue to it. It did hold my shadows in place fine. Like my shadows went on and they stayed in place, but I just didn't like the feeling of it on the eyes. It took way too long to rub in. And I wouldn't say that it's like super brightening. It is a white product, but the white product kind of disappears once it's on the eyes. So if you have dry eyelids, you might really enjoy it. But if you have oily eyelids, I feel like there are a lot of better alternatives out there. Even though it is affordable, I prefer like the e.l.f. Cosmetics white eyeshadow base to this one. So I know I shared a couple of repeat favorites that I talked about in my winter essentials video that I'm also talking about in this video, but I have to reiterate the fact that I love these products. These are from eSalon and I did work with them for that video, but this video is not sponsored. I just wanted to mention them again to you guys because I've been using them every single time I wash my hair and my hair gets so dry during the winter. I really struggle with breakage during the winter and it starts breaking off, especially like these pieces around my face because I do wear my hair up in like a super tight mess messy bun when I'm working out and then you know on my off days when I'm just like around the house cleaning or or whatever so I feel like it breaks off really easily because of that but also because my hair gets really brittle and dry so I've been using their moisturizing shampoo and conditioner every time I wash my hair during like the majority of November and December, and it's done amazing things for my hair. My hair feels so soft and hydrated and smooth, and it looks so much less dry than it normally does. They hydrate my hair without weighing it down, which is like my number one goal during the winter time. So I will definitely be using their moisturizing shampoo and conditioner all winter long, I'm going to repurchase them and use them because I do go through shampoo and conditioner really, really quickly. They did give my subscribers a buy one, get one free deal, which I believe is still going on. So I'll link that in the description box below if you guys want to take advantage of it. Again, not sponsored. I just have to share that with you. And I didn't talk about this in my winter essentials video, but I've also been loving their Shining Armor Renewing Treatment Oil. If you guys have super dry hair, you have to try this product as well. I like mixing it in with my conditioner in the shower for like extra hydration, but I also use it after I wash my hair and comb it and I'll apply it to the ends of my hair and either let my hair air dry if I have the time or blow dry and it just really completely like smooths your hair out and it just makes it look shiny and hydrated. So the ends of my hair can have a tendency to look really, really dry, so I really enjoy this product for just making them look a little bit more smooth and hydrated, but it also works really well if you apply it to your conditioner or apply it in your conditioner and all over your hair and leave it on in the shower as like a deep conditioning treatment. I think that that's a great option too. So my favorite lip product this month was the ColourPop Lippy Stick in the shade Aquarius. I love the lippy sticks. Once winter rolls around, I feel like I always reach for them just because they're so 
comfortable on the lips, but they stay in place really well for like a traditional lipstick formula. I don't find that they wear off really easily or really quickly and they feel and look really beautiful. So Aquarius is a really great nude. I'm wearing the shade Choker, which I don't know if it was a limited edition product or not, but if not, I'll link it in the description box below. Okay guys, that's the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you let me know in the comments below which products were your favorite during the month of December because I would honestly love to hear from you guys. I hope that the rest of your month goes really well and I hope that 2018 is your best year yet. Thank you guys for watching and spending a few minutes of your day with me here on my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!